gosh darn video upload. Go, man, go! Two hours and a, well, two and a half hours, come on! Man, is that slow. I need to kick this thing in the butt. Come on, let's get going. You're supposed to be the fastest one out there. What you doing? <laughs> Maybe it's because we live out in country assville, that's why. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Howdy YouTube, welcome to RV Daydream. And by the time you see this, hopefully all those videos are done from when we went to the Cleveland RV show. And did we buy anything? No, <laughs> we didn't buy anything. Uh, did we shop? Window shopped. <laughs> Up close and personal. We got in everything. We looked at the windows. <laughs> we looked out the windows. So we, we just had a good time up there. Um, we met a lot of people. Wow. I was telling Heidi, I, I didn't know if it's because I know we have a tendency if we're watching YouTube and I'm watching a channel and then I find out that, you know, they're from Ohio since we're in Ohio, I might actually subscribe to them a little bit faster than I would if they might be the exact same channel, but they're out of another state. I, I, I actually, we don't subscribe to that many channels. Uh, I don't know. We watch videos as we watch them. I, it's, it's, it's hit and miss how we feel. Um, if we got a lot of stuff to do, we don't watch any videos. Um, again, I, I don't think there's any rhyme or reason how anybody really watches these things. Uh, but we do have uh, a lot of subscribers that just stop at us. I mean, we were actually at a restaurant eating um, after the show, and a guy came in and he immediately said, RV Daydream. And I said, yeah, hey, how you doing? I'm thinking, well, it just so happens, you know, he he come up to the RV show and, you know, maybe. No, no, he was from the area. <laughs> and he subscribed. And, uh, yeah, he stopped and talked to us. So there's a whole list of people. And I think what I'll do is probably have uh, some sort of a rolling credit thing here we might add at some point. I don't know if I'll do it on this video, but um, I'd like to actually talk about each of one of the subscribers we met. Because I, I, some of them, you know, good just cool stories and hearing how uh, they've interacted with us without us even knowing it of course through YouTube and uh, it, it, it's just interesting it's really interesting all right enough of that stuff what am I doing today <clears throat> well it's weird Ohio weather let me just put it that way it's we really really weird and today is about 40 something I think 48 ish um, tomorrow's going to be like 50, and then we're going to have like four days maybe of snow, but I don't see bitterly cold temperatures or anything right now. Uh, it's just odd. So the fact that it's not crazy cold out, um, there's some stuff we got to do, and it's because our son is like chomping at the bit. He wants to leave Ohio and head down to Florida. Now, I'm having sort of a little bit of an issue with that to some extent because uh, my army buddy he's got a house guest and um, that we were kinda hoping my son might be able to just park in his driveway um, back I guess he's got a bigger area because of course he's got uh, a motor home and stuff like that and just throw a cord to him you know just plug in but because of this house guest I think that might be a little bit of a touchy subject sounds like that the house guests that, that they have might have were out there welcome I don't know <laughs> I'm just guessing. <laughs> so in the meantime, uh, he just wants to leave. He says, listen, I'll get down there. I'll figure something out, um, which is exactly what he needs to do. Um, you know, not not overanalyze. I've talked about that plenty of times, that whole analysis paralysis. Uh, but just hop in his van and go down there and figure it out. Um, however, I think he needs to put a little bit more money in his pocket before he goes out of here. Um, he hasn't really been clear on, on what he's got, but... Uh, he knows we're always a backup for him in case there's an issue. Uh, I just don't want it to be that way. And getting his van prepared to go down it isn't a big deal. He's got to reload it back up with a lot of stuff he took out, uh, such as his freezer, uh, refrigerator. He took that out. Um, he had to clean it up real good. So that has to go back in, which is nothing more than putting it in. It, I mean, that tray that we build it on, um, you know, it, it doesn't secure itself or anything. It, it just kind of hooks itself in. 
uh, to uh, the, the tray the and the stops that I have on it have so it don't move around. And, uh, yeah, he just plugs it in at that point. The other thing he needs to do is um, also uh, put his uh, water back in there because it was being winter. He didn't want it to freeze, so all the water's out of there except for the... Uh, gray water tank which isn't a big deal everything's open there and the most important thing is we have never really finished out the generator mount for the back of his van uh, we've never set it up to where um, I've had the cargo carrier in we put the steel box on the back and uh, it, it clears everything but we have to do something about his license plate because his license plate is being blocked um, we don't want to put it on the other side because the doors will be into where he can't open them. Um, the main door, the door that he'll be getting in and out of most of the time. So there's some problems there. Um, we also have to then secure the box to the cargo carrier. We also were talking about making the cargo carrier shorter, closer to the van. I don't know if that's still, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I'd like to, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Then we've got to figure out the generator situation. He has a small generator, and the box that we have for the back of his van, although it's small, it is steel. It's really heavy. So we got to figure out the weight on that and see if it's too much. Uh, we also, you know, the generator will fit in there easily, plus other stuff like a gas can. But um, there's talk about him running the generator and not just using the box to store the generator but using the box to also run his generator in the box and keep it secured and dry in case it's raining uh, the problem with that is of course the gas can's got to come out not a big deal but he's got to secure all this stuff all this stuff has to be secured and now the box has to be vented so there's a lot of things we're doing a lot of things we're looking at and since that video is uploading I figured I'd try to try to figure this out um, he, he has his ideas about it, but he he knows that I would do it a little bit better than him, and I don't have a problem figuring it out for him, but it's going to take some time and some heavy lifting. I mean, literally, that, that steel box is pretty heavy, even though it's not very big. Okay, we got to get our mail, because we were gone for I don't know how many days, and uh, I had the post office hold it, and they're delivering it all in one big bulk today. Um, if you guys don't know, you can do that when you're on vacation. Just get online. You have to sign up for your USPS account. And at that point, you can um, do all kinds of stuff with your mail. And you can have it to where they hold it at the post office. You can pick it up there or have them deliver the whole bulk load once you're finished. It's really nice. We don't have to worry about our mail here. Even though our son's here, um, it was nice just not knowing our mail in case he forgot that uh, it wasn't just out there in the box potentially getting wet or plowed over if we had enough snow all right Whew, that's a lot of talking let's go try to do something and i'll show you <laughs> all right guys so what i did was get rid of the hinge to make this a folding as i said once he's out on the road he doesn't need it to fold up out of the way necessarily and the reason is is because now it's at least five inches closer to the back um and the bumper actually kind of steadies it a little bit. I do have that anti-rattle hitch back there. Now, with the box up on here, it'll block his license plate. So we had to mount his license plate up here. So there's a couple of pieces of uh, treated 2x4 in here that's uh, secured to the uh, lugs that actually hold this cover on. And the license plate should be lighted. We know that. However, um, to run a light... Yeah, it might be a pain in the butt and even then um, it may not be sufficient enough for the police that they don't want to pull them over so we're gonna go without a light and in full-blown display uh, I mean it's pretty easy to see here from pretty much any angle and I'm assuming headlights will uh, easily illuminate that as long as it's kept clean uh, that's why there's a plastic cover on it so it'll help keep it clean so the reflective surface works but yeah the hitch is really really sturdy back here or the cargo carrier so he's going to drive around with that on it for a, a while and get used to it and then of course here's the box and we were looking at it and we need to put two uh, treated two by fours um, along the one along the front one along the back on the rack itself and then mount the box to that and uh, That'll allow the uh, door to open fully the way it's supposed to. And then as far as the generator, 
um, it'll fit in there easily and he can put a gas can in there and uh, that'll give him the ability to run the generator um, when he needs electricity now of course we're not going to necessarily work this box over the box is going to be for storage so what we'll have to do is whenever it's time for him to run the generator he'll have to take it out of the box set it on the rack set it on the ground set it somewhere um, and then uh, plug in his van to it and run it that way of course he's got a bike cable that he can secure that little generator to this rack so it doesn't get stolen while it's out running so this is uh, the project for the time being and uh, we got more till it's ready for you to go. You ready to go down there? Been ready. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. Look at Heidi trying out her new hobby. What are you doing? I found some junk. Cool. At least I found some stuff. Yeah. Found a bottle cap. I'll leave you alone. It's nice, she's trying a new hobby. She wants to do something that's a little bit healthier. <laughs> and by no means is waving that thing around exercise, but you know, uh, she don't have a cigarette in her hand. A little bit more, 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 more. More, more, okay. So we got this all buttoned up. Uh, he's vacuuming out his van because the snow, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, there's a few flakes that are flying by. And he's wanting to get out of here. Um, I'm thinking that he's probably going to get out of here within the next about three days. And he's heading south. He's going to North Carolina. And then after that, uh, on to Florida. The weight of all this stuff is it, a little bit heavy. I mean, you're talking about 40, about 40 pound, 35 pounds for the rack somewhere in that neighborhood the box itself um, it weighs about 30 pounds and then the generator you're talking I don't know maybe 20 pounds uh, but we do have it really secure I mean it is so solid um, between the ratchet straps and then the anti rattle hitch that I have underneath there this thing is really really solid so he's happy about that uh, to where I told him because he, he was he was telling me hey I just want to leave out of here he says is there any way we can just not even put the box on the truck and I said the problem with that is you're not going to uh, have the ability to charge your batteries that are in the back unless you're plugged in I said if you have this box uh, with your bike lock that'll allow you to pull that generator out lock it up to the rack and plug in your van and that's it you're finished you're you're good you can go anywhere you want you can 
you know, use some of the state parks that are out there that there's no hookups. And uh, he seemed pretty hip on that. So that, that's why it's bolted on. And that thing's not going anywhere. There's three eighths inch eye bolts that we stretched out and made into J bolts that are underneath two cross braces uh, that run from the front to the back. Uh, and they're all secured in there. So it's, it's really solid. You can see him getting in and out. The thing hardly moved at all. So, yeah, he's, he's in pretty good shape. I'm kind of glad that he's straightened out. He's going to get his other mattress, though. He's got a real nice memory foam in the house that fits in here. He's been using this other one since elementary school. <laughs> he was actually wanting to grab our Big Buddy heater that is on the porch, or actually we use on the porch occasionally. Um, you know, it's supposed to be for our RV, but we're finding that we don't need it as much as we thought. It's so, it's so cold out here that the camera went dead, so I'm using my phone. Um, it just seems like that we're always plugged in. And with those 30-pound tanks, I am not a fan of 30-pound tanks. I have not had to fill them. I, I've not had to refill them. Uh, the reason I don't like 30-pound tanks is if you have a 20-pound tank, you can go anywhere at any time, pretty much, a convenience store, gas stations. I mean, even us living out in the boonies like we do, I know that I can walk right across the street there if they're open and uh, do a, a propane tank exchange. Same with uh, up the streets, 24 hours, seven days a week. I can walk in and do a propane tank exchange. You can't do that with 30-pound tanks. However, the one benefit that I'm finding with the 30-pound tanks is obviously they work just as much as a 20 and then half as much so it seems like that when we do run the furnace in the rv we haven't we haven't drained out we haven't run out uh, as quick as we would with a 20 i mean common sense right duh <laughs> so that's uh that's basically what we're getting buckled up here for him i want to give you guys an update and let you know you know he is heading out and He's excited. Uh, I'm excited that we got that mounted on there for him. Uh, I mean, it's all the plans coming. I love it when the plans coming together. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, going to be sad that he's taking off. You know, we like having him at the house and hanging out. But uh, I'm really excited that he's going to get out of here. So what we need to do is get his uh, commode out here back in the, the van. Um, and we need to get his uh, one other thing. Oh. He needs to get his water supply. His water supply has been in the house uh, since he got back from Wisconsin. So we need to put those jugs back in there for him. Yeah, he's he's definitely on his way. That's for sure. Really, uh, really feel a little jealous about that. All right, I'm going to cut this off for now. This, we'll throw this on with the rest of the video. Let's see what's coming up next. Three, two, one. Bam. <laughs> yeah, another day. And... Uh, I don't know if our son got to where he wanted to be. Right now he isn't, but he will be. Yeah, because the snow came. No, it's not bad. You can see Heidi didn't sweep before she walked. <laughs> I always sweep before I walk because my big butt presses that in there. So he's got snow. We got snow. There's a little bit of snow, and this is very, very little. Uh, I'm kind of saddened, but also real excited. Uh, we went ahead and got his transponder set up for his uh, toll roads, and he's heading out of here, most likely within the next few hours. And the reason is, is because we got a lot of snow coming. No, not a lot of snow, maybe two or three inches, but it's supposed to fall relatively quick, and there might be some slushy ice uh, crossover weather. I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, so he's wanting to get out of the area before all that really falls. Uh, the roads are clear. Um, they are a little damp, but they're clear. Uh, but it's going to get much colder. I told him, I said, listen, you don't have to leave today if you don't want to. Um, however, if you don't, there's going to be a lot of snow that has fallen. And then when you do leave, you're going to have like four days. It's really cold weather um, compared to what we've been experiencing. We're actually going to have cooler than average temperatures not cold but just cooler than average so the lows are going to be in the uh, teens and the highs are going to be in the 20s something like that he's going down to be in the greensboro area um, i guess he's got some friends he's going to meet down there 
and I told him it's not exactly warm in Greensboro either. Um, it's going to be pretty chilly for about four or five days. So he's going to stick with his little buddy heater for the time being. Hopefully he can get it you know, plugged in wherever he goes to. Uh, but more importantly than that, he needs to uh, make sure that his water don't freeze. Um, that, I mean, that's a concern. But it was kind of a catch-22. He goes, yeah, I'm damned if I do, if I damned if I don't. I said, yeah, I said, you, you can wait you know, and, and not have to rush and, um, you know, the storm will come and go and then you'll be okay to drive, but it's going to be really cold. I said, or you can leave when it's kind of cold and, um, beat the storm and not have to deal with all that crap. Uh, but then you're going to, you know, be into some really cold weather. Now he's, when he's in North Carolina, obviously it's still going to be cold for him regardless, but I think their lows are in the twenties, um, pretty much every night. So I, I think he'll do fine there. We've had people that always ask us, you know, the update on the cap, uh, like I mentioned, um, or I know that a lot of you, you know, that you don't, you're not doing the same thing I am. And that's, you know, counting the days, uh, we dropped this off on December the 12th. So. I'm thinking a total of two months. Well, it's only been one month. So the truck's still sitting with the tonneau cover on it. And again, I'm gonna reiterate it. I'm very, very hopeful that they fix the cap, whatever's going on with it. But $228 tonneau cover, I've had it parked nose down. I've had it parked nose up as far as the truck because our driveway slopes. And I've hardly had any water whatsoever get inside the bed compared to what that cap offered inside the bed as far as water. So I don't know what to say about that. I mean, again, $228 bed cover keeps the bed relatively dry. I mean, very acceptable dry. The little bit of water it's got in there is so tiny, it's hardly anything at all. And then I have almost a $4,000 cap that it seemed like every time it rained, it was getting wet in the bed. You do the math on that. I think that was probably a bad thing. Okay, so here's the dealio. Um, our son was going to try to get out of here. He, he didn't know exactly when, but his sleep schedule's all goofed up. He sleeps all different times a day. Um, and he was hoping to leave uh, tomorrow, Saturday. But this is the reason I told him not to. I'll show you the weather here real quick. This is the uh, time in which this storm here is going to be, of course near us let me go ahead and fast forward a little bit more you can see we have a little bit of flurries now nothing crazy matter of fact it's not bad at all but the thing is is the timing of the storm here um i don't know if you can tell but up here it's the mark that's midnight of course 36 hours and you can see that it's you're, they're talking about saturday so or Saturday, this is going to start coming in, and you can see all this crap. And he would have to drive through all this. And the thing is, is it's going to get you know even more pronounced here. Let me go ahead and show you. Yeah, look at all that crap. And he'll be driving through all this. So um, I told him, I said, you're just going to have to deal with the storm that's here. And this is what our storm, which isn't crazy, it's been a dud so far this year but this is what we'll be getting um, depends on how much rain is there and how much becomes snow but they're saying most likely four inches that, that's probably about right so i told him hey you know you can leave if if he departs tonight right around 5 p.m or 6 30 p.m and he drives straight straight through that will put him um, in Greensboro, North Carolina, where he wants to hang out um, at about, well, I think it was uh, something like uh, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. And I told him once he's there in Greensboro, they do have the chance of having ice there, you know, having, having some ice storms, ice, whatever you want to call it. So I... I again advised him I said whenever you get there at 1 in the morning 2 in the morning whatever that may be you're probably not going to be able to do much until after noon so you could sleep you know you could find a place and you could sleep until around noon 
or uh, just stay local to the area that you're wanting to meet up with your friends but he he's just not ready to to pack up everything and go right away he would have to rush and he's afraid of forgetting stuff which I don't blame him um, he could get out here you know he could get out the door but he he, he said listen and he goes why why rush it why don't you know I'll take my time I'll get all my clothes washed up I'll get you know everything packed the way I want it to um, and that'll give him a chance to actually he wants to go out with friends tonight <laughs> which I understand um, before he takes off and the good news is is we're not gonna have anything other than what we've got going on now until after one here I'll show you this is pretty much what it looks like out my office window here and you know, there's nothing really to speak of we had more snow this morning like I was showing you um, and the sun's come out and took away a lot of that but this is what's gonna look like until after midnight some point and then it'll start coming in and uh, again it's not crazy um, not enough to even bother getting out the plow or anything we will have to get some salt for our steps out front um, which we need to do anyways we always usually get a little bag of salt and have it sitting there and these winters have become more and more mild we used to used to get a big bag of salt and uh, you know sometimes two big bags of salt to get us through the winter and sometimes we'd have some leftover but now we've just been needing little bags of salt yeah I'm kinda glad why not I'll keep this up and running and uh, we'll talk to my son a little bit before he takes off and what he's got in got in plan really honestly I don't think he has a game plan I told him keep your plans fluid and just do what you gotta do so yeah let's talk to him and I don't know it'll be for you guys it'll be real quick but yeah maybe in a day here so what do we think well we think there's a lot of snow and we think that my son needs to go find the shovel and shovel this before he smashes all this down so the the snow rain this is what I wanted him to stay for and avoid and you can see of course he avoided all this now it's all rain this is all rain right now and we're supposed to get up to like 50 degrees so I'm not gonna plow I, I should get the plow out and do, dick around a little bit but in the meantime he wanted to make sure that his van he, he has a uh, try to keep the rain off you guys he has a camera system that I got him a couple Christmases ago uh, that's for a dash cam because I told him you know hey you got to protect yourself out there the problem is is um, he was having a problem with an SD card so when we put the box here I never even bothered uh, trying to clear off and get that rear camera that's there and put it out here so that kind of sucks yeah we, I gotta maybe shovel that off or something the the shovels are all in the garage isn't it funny we still haven't had the snow shovels out and you know we're into uh, January middle of January but this is what he was avoiding you could see all the ice on the tree and that and this storm isn't near as bad as storms we had in the past but you know it's it, it could have caused a problem I mean we got quite a bit of ice on these limbs you can see how thick it is so I just seen that again the plow go up the street so it's going to be interesting to see if my mailbox stands when he comes back because this stuff is wet and heavy and when they come down through here they are not going slow you can see them I'm gonna hurry up and try to get my mail if it's already gone yep it already went and I'm gonna film behind me here whew, to see if our mailbox stands or not Man, this rain has gotten really bad. I told him, actually, this is probably the best time for him to leave. Okay, here we go. Will the mailbox make it? Look at the snow. Look at it. Man, did that blast that mailbox. <laughs> oh, my. Man, did that blast that mailbox. <laughs>
Well, <laughs> the mailbox stood, but man, it's just rooster tailing. So let's go in and uh, talk at him. Well, I got to clean off this snow and ice before it gets worse. And then we'll go in and talk with him about his departure. Well, screw all that. Whew. This is turning to ice again. And it's not even cold right now, but it's slushy and slippery. Might have to have Heidi bring some uh, salt home. Ugh. Oh, I should have shoveled a little bit further here, shouldn't I? Didn't quite, quite get to where I wanted because I like to expose I like to expose my shoe <laughs> I like to expose that uh, those railroad ties that we have there so people can see the edge of our driveway this stuff's heavy and metal man this is stuff heavy I wonder if Heidi's car will be able to make it over that <laughs> better break it down for her huh I mean, I'm not going to plow this because the fact that we got new gravel um yeah, that could be an issue because it's definitely not frozen. I'd rather have all this freeze and get real cold and then try to plow it because um, the gravel wouldn't come up then. Then I remembered I left this unlocked. The other reason I'm not getting out the uh, mower, although I've had it running and all that stuff, it's, it's ready to go. It got a flat <laughs> from sitting. I mean, we just don't ever use it. I have battery maintainers, which I forgot to plug in. Uh oh bad news. Crap. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And the reason I say crap is that's not a charger, that's a maintainer. Uh, what was I thinking? Well, here's the deal. You know there's always a deal. So here's the deal. I always got it reasons why I don't do anything. If I knew for sure we were going to have some more snow, which we're not, we might have a spotty flurries, but nothing, nothing that'll come even close to this little bit that we've got is going to be just minor what comes next. So I'm not concerned about it. But more importantly than that, we have a stretch of cold days. I don't know, four or five cold days. After those four or five cold days, we're getting back into the 40s. So maybe I'll come out and, and play around with this mower at this time. I mean, I could start it today. It's relatively warm. I could start it and let it run and uh, make sure that everything's okay. Maybe I'd put air in the tire. But uh, that would charge the battery right away. But I'll, I'll just wait until, since I don't need it, I'll just wait until later. It's one of those things it's not that I'm being lazy it's just I don't want to be out here trying to start this when I have other stuff to do like get this video shot and go talk to our son I want to go do that but yeah good news is is uh, he still listens to the old man occasionally and even though he wanted to leave real bad I told him I said you the weather that you'd be driving through it's really crappy I mean it's one thing to get maybe you know some snow um, and it's another to get rain I'm trying to fiddle with this door I don't know if you can tell we got kind of a rig job that goes on here there we go but it's a complete other thing when you're dealing with ice ice is no good I mean everybody that lives in the north knows that when you start throwing in the chances of the rain uh, that you're traveling in becoming ice uh, there's been times that when I drew, used to work in Akron, there's been times that I was driving from Akron back home and I had a rusty old winter car. A lot of people in Ohio have winter cars. If they have nice cars, they have winter cars. Just a beater that they buy. And back then you could buy a, a winter car for $500. It was really good. That would run really well and just was rusty. But when scrap prices went up, the prices of beaters went up. So anyways getting back to the story I was driving back from Akron and I had an old Dodge Aspen that was my winter beater I bought for $150 and the there you couldn't put really anything in the trunk except in the middle and even that it would get wet because the fenders were so rusted out in the back you could hear the water when you're driving coming up into the trunk and into the fenders um, so 
as I was driving, I was listening to the radio, not very loud, and I'm going through slushy crap like this. And you could hear the water going into the uh, trunk of the car. Once I crossed uh, State Route 43, for you guys that know this area, once I crossed State Route 43 on 224 and was heading east, once I got into um, past Randolph and went over 44, all of a sudden I noticed that I turned down the radio. I, I can't hear the water getting in the... I can't, I, I can't hear the water anymore. Well, that's funny because the roads are awful wet. And just about then I thought, and this car got did exceptional in the winter. That, that Dodge Aspen just was a good winter car and uh, had really good all-season tires on it. And I just gave it a little wiggle on the steering and the back end kind of slid around. You could, you could just feel it. And I was like, wow. And the reason I don't hear the water coming up in the trunk is because it's all ice. Now, we were in a, a procession of cars and there was this big old Buick in front of me. Again, this is back in the 90s, so to see a 1970s, whatever it was, uh, like an Olds Delta 88 on the road, I mean, that wasn't uncommon. And I seen this big Olds Delta 88 in front of me, and he was going really pretty slow. Now, right behind him was a Suzu, uh, uh, sorry, Suzuki, um, tracker or whatever that thing is the Suzuki uh, Samurai little Samurai and he's like riding on this guy's butt now again this is in the 90s so the Suzuki Samurai had been out just for a few years and people still really you know back then thought those were real winter vehicles because they're four-wheel drive this is like a little Jeep well Jeeps aren't that great in the winter in the first place so a little Jeep probably isn't that great either which goes on to this story so here's this big old Delta 88 thing, trugging along, doing this, you know, under the speed limit, but doing a good speed to where they're not threatening uh, themselves as far as going off the road. And uh, then the Suzuki Samurai, then myself, and we're driving along nice and easy. At this point, I know it's all ice. And this little Suzuki is just like right on this guy's butt. And I'm thinking, man, this guy's really pushing that big car especially being in that little car and I, apparently they didn't know what the roads were like either as like I said if it wasn't for those rusty holes in the back I wouldn't have realized that I was on ice I know people call it black ice it's just transparent on the road so they call it black ice so it looks like roadway that's just wet and here it's all ice and as we got up to a bridge seam a seam in the bridge and this is where 225, I'm sorry, 183 and 224 does a jog, if you guys know this area. In Randolph, Atwater, whatever you want to call it. That's Atwater, I guess. As soon as they hit the seam where the, the roadway meets the bridge, as soon as they crossed over that, you know, of course the roadway's icy, but the bridge is really icy. And just that little break in the road of that seam, causing the vehicle to do a little bump, just started putting that little Suzuki in a slide and it went right across and bip, right off the, the guardrail that kept it from going over the bridge and uh, of course there was no oncoming traffic it, or it would have been a real bad accident and uh, that's when I learned that a lot of those vehicles were starting to put automatic four-way flashers in so if you got in an accident um, it would make those airbags go off inside or a airbag back then and uh, the four-way flashers came on immediately <laughs> So, that's my story about rusty winter vehicles and driving in icy conditions when you don't know if it's water or ice. Um, it's, it's really, really bad. Of course, there's a lot of places in the country like that, but I thought I'd share that. Just giving you content. Is that so, so bad? How smart is your old man telling you not to drive until the storm passes? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you'd never hear your kids say, oh, yeah, my parents are smart. <laughs> so you guys seen all the snow out there. Um, so what? Uh, what's your plan? You're going to be leaving tomorrow, most likely. What are you going to do then? I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, pop on down to, well, through Virginia and then down to Greensboro, North Carolina. And uh, basically... 
think my friend, I don't know, he'll be available at some point. We'll meet up and do whatever, hang out, talk, I don't know. How long and you then, plan on staying there, you think? Uh, probably just a night, and then someone else I'm going to meet up in Durham, and then I'm going to go over to Ray, uh, Raleigh. Or, or Raleigh. Raleigh. Yeah, Raleigh. Um, j yeah, just think R-O-L-L-I-E. Oh, uh, Raleigh. Okay. Uh, by the way, not that far from Raleigh, it's a Bass Pro Shop. You can stay the night in the parking lot there. Yeah, no, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't no, everybody does. It. It's like Walmart. Yeah, I know. Um, the nice thing is with uh, your van... I keep on telling him, and I keep on forgetting. I mean, he has a normal van. He could park damn near anywhere he wants. Anywhere. So that's kind of cool. He don't have to go to, like, a Walmart <laughs> if he don't want to. He'd go to any parking lot anywhere in the U.S. and pretty well, much I mean, park or any street. The, the, the good chance of it all is I'm, I'm probably going to be staying with people. Yeah. I'm assuming. We should, at some point today, that probably been a good idea to plug in your van. Give it a good, the battery's a good charge since they've been yeah. cold. It's going to get really cold. So, then um, after that, what do you think? Just going down uh, to Florida. I might, I might meet. Someone. Oh, Georgia. I might meet someone in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. And then probably yeah, Florida. I mean, that's really the plan. Every one of those states that you mentioned, as far as like uh, North Carolina and and Georgia. Yeah. Um, it still gets cold there, and it's still going yeah. to be kind of cold there. So yeah. just to let you know. Oh, I know. I mean, even when you get to Florida, I mean, it it could get kind of chilly at night but nothing like this crap not, yeah. not what we're gonna have but the good news is i think there's a warm pattern that's moving back in for february um who knows who knows how that's gonna work so are you, you excited or uh yeah <laughs> you just get on the road yeah just get out of here <laughs> yeah and then as far as um just getting down to florida just trying to find odd end jobs do whatever you feel that feel like you want to do yeah but you talked about and this is something that a lot of people probably think about too is you might find an area that you like and just kind of hang out there for a year, a year you don't know i yeah. mean i'm just saying for a yeah, while no. that's, that's uh, i'm i'm open to <laughs> any of that happening you're right right so any of you guys that live down in Florida, if you know of some kind of a temporary gig, specifically the East Coast or the yeah the East Coast. yeah the East Coast of Florida, I, he's he's in the same boat as I am because I I know not those I don't I don't mind inland or, oh right or, uh, except it's hot <laughs> well, I mean, not inland but necessarily uh, the Gulf the Coast, Coast. Yeah. yeah yeah I told him to stay near the coast especially if he's going to be there in the summer obviously because of the the ocean breeze. You know, it's always, it just seems a little cooler by the ocean than inland. But if you guys, either either coast, basically, um, if you guys know of anything, that anybody's got anything going on that might... Yeah, any, uh, any leads are appreciated. Yeah, yeah. Reaching out. Reaching out to all our subscribers. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I know your mom's going to be all worried the whole time. <laughs> keep it. Try and keep it to a one to two text a week. Minimum. Yeah, Should right. That, good luck with if that. That's possible. Good luck with that. All you got to do is just, all I would do is send her a message say, hey, I'm here. Boom. Oh, that's, <laughs> Next. Yeah. Oh, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> or you just put, you know what you do? This is what people, this is how a lot of people start YouTube. I ain't saying start YouTube, but mm -hmm. on your Facebook, just selfie. I'm in Georgia. Click. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, All right. I'll let you go get your sleep or whatever you want to do. Check this out. I'm I'm legal now. They just finally sent this. I'll show the camera first. Boom. Wasons. Yeah. Oh wow. So <laughs> I'm a packing. Don't mess with me now. <laughs> All right. So say bye to the viewers. We'll get an update. Bye. We'll get an update for you guys whenever he's out and let them know what's going on to some extent let us know if you want to see more of the van channel stuff because he could always send me raw video files and i could put something together if he's out there or even if he put together yeah, thing would bring my uh, handy cam. oh yeah that's a good idea but you'd have to um google drive you know common share thing so i, I could know, do I it that know. way but yeah yeah you know more than i do how they had you doing that stuff in school yeah i, I didn't even know what google was until you guys told me <laughs>
They're like, Google, Google. And I'm like, uh-uh, that sounds made up. I don't think that's a good idea. Google Drive this. I said, no, I don't want my computer being slowed down by it. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally I looked into it. I'm like, hey, this Google Drive seems kind of smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll let him go, and uh, I'll close out this video. I know this video is kind of long. It might be rambling in parts, um, but uh, seriously, on a serious note, um, he is going down south. He doesn't have necessarily a game plan um, because he's a, a good hard worker. He listens to what he, you want him to do. Um, he could pretty much, I'm sure, pick up any job. Uh, he, he's just that kind of a person that, you know, he could uh, he could do the work. And yeah, I don't know. I, I, I told him that you, you just got to, you know, jump into the water. I mean, we all know this on a serious note. If you guys have any um, leads to anything down south, Florida, on either coast, um, he's trying to get south of, like, uh, he wants to be south of Daytona. So Daytona south on the east coast, on the uh, ocean side, or uh, from basically, like, uh, just uh, Wesley Chapel. That's about as far inland as he wants to be. And then south on the Gulf Coast, um, you know, maybe down to Fort Myers or maybe even south of that, but somewhere there. And even if it's inland, uh, you know, if as long as he's staying cool, um, I told him, you know, in the summer it could get pretty hot there. You know, he's got to experience it. Uh, so we want to just, you know, basically kick him out of the nest and let him fly. I mean, he's, he's capable, uh, just like we're capable. Um, <laughs> you just got to go do it. And I, I think that he might be, you know, a little bit gun shy at this point, uh, just talking with him. Um, you know, he, 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 this is the first time he posed some, you know, pretty serious questions. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do when I get down there. And I'm like, you're not, you're going to do the same thing you do with the house here. You're just going to live. You're going to do the exact same thing you do with the house, but you're going to do it in your van. Uh, the nice thing is, is he has unlimited data through our, our cell phone. Um, he does have a laptop uh that's it's one of my old laptops i gave to him it's from like 2014 um, but it has a lot of storage really good screen really good speakers uh although i found out that the battery is shot which i keep it plugged in all the time that's probably why it's shot so yeah he he's kind of reaching out and i told him i said ah, we'll shoot it on the video we'll put it on the video and see if anybody uh has anything um and again uh texas i i i told him uh you know, we've got your email and everything. Damn it, if I can remember names. And you just commented the other day on or liked one of our uh, Instagram posts or Facebook posts, too. Why can't I remember your name? Anyways, the gentleman who's our subscriber that lives in Texas that gave us the offer of letting him plug in down there. Um, his plans are fluid. If he doesn't find anything in Florida or if he don't like what he's seeing, he, he'll make his way over that way eventually, maybe going out towards the, uh, the coast. But west coast that is that's it i'm closing this out this has gone on way too long and as always guys we hope to see you out there bye